Welcome to St. John's, and please uh, join us as we begin in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the opportunity to serve you. May all of our actions bring you praise in a special way today. We pray for the parish of St. John the Baptist, for whom this Mass is being offered. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. St. John the Baptist. For us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Sing. 
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we gather this morning as we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Family. And we know that the family is truly a gift to us, an opportunity to grow in charity, to grow uh, just uh, in love with one another and with Christ. But so often we also turn against one another and we turn against God. And so let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty, Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth. to give us a shining example of the Holy Family. Graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity. And so in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. God sets a father in honor over his children. A mother's authority confirms over her sons. Whoever honors his father atones for sins and preserves himself from them. When he prays, he is heard. He stores up riches who reveres his mother. 
Whoever honors his father is gladdened by children, and when he prays, is heard. Whoever reveres his father will live a long life. He who obeys his father brings comfort to his mother. My son, take care of your father when he is old. Grieve him not as long as he lives. Even if his mind fail, be considerate of him. Revile him not all the days of his life. Kindness to a father will not be forgotten, firmly planted against the dead of your sins, a house raised in justice. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians, brothers and sisters. Put on, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another if one has a grievance against another. As the Lord has forgiven you, so must you also do. 
and over all these put on love, that is, the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you were also called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, be subordinate to your husbands, as is proper in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and avoid any bitterness toward them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this is pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, so they may not become discouraged. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons, in accordance with the dictate and the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory for your people, Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed what was said about him, and Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted, and you yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day with fasting and prayer. 
And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who are awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. So again, today we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Family. I think it's so appropriate uh, that this feast always falls right around, uh, well, a couple days after Christmas. It can be up to, you know, five days after the celebration of Christmas the day. But remember, we're also in the octave of Christmas. But I think one of the reasons that we have this Feast of the Holy Family is to remind us that this is what we are called to be as well, a holy family. And sometimes around the holiday season, this can be hard to do. Sometimes there's stress with the holiday season. Sometimes there is, uh, you, know, you know, some sort, maybe even some fighting going on around Christmas time, which is weird that that happens, but we know that it does. And yet, we have this beautiful feast to remind us that we too are called to be a holy family. And how do we do that? Well, we do what Mary and Joseph did. They put God, they put Jesus at the center of their life. St. Paul goes on to to write about how we can be holy as well. Not so much in the context of family right away. He does a little bit later in this passage from the second reading. But I think the beginning part of Colossians here is so beautiful. I think maybe even for for parents to try to instill this in their their children of how can we do this. It kind of seems like the the great uh, rule for a family. What does he say? Put on as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion and kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If one has a grievance against another, as the Lord has forgiven you, so must you also do. And over all these, put on love. That is the bond of perfection. And if a family, if a household can truly do this, then we're going to have that peace that we're longing for. If a parent can express this to their children in a way that is truly loving and not coming out of anger, there's going to be that peace. And if children can listen to their parents as well. Once again, we know that it's hard sometimes because family, let's be honest, we all know how to push each other's buttons. My siblings, when I go home, and I love them, I truly do. I love my family like no tomorrow, but they know how to push buttons sometimes. (laughs) Even on Christmas Day, I tried taking a quick nap and that lasted for 30 seconds before my sister walked in and turned on the light. Thanks, Anna. I appreciate it, right? And I said, okay, I got to work on forgiving. And that's, of course, what, what we did. But once again, it's, it's sometimes hard to, to have uh, that, that love and that patience in the midst of a family. And it doesn't mean we don't love them, but it also means sometimes we just have to, in a very simple way, in a wise way, sometimes have to maybe just walk away real quick uh, to, to take a breath. And for me, to try to call upon the Holy Spirit. I want to share a story with you that I actually gave a homily about uh, eight years ago at St. Ambrose. And before I, I say the story, I want to let you know, I have permission for my mom to share it. All right, She's actually going to be at the 10 o'clock Mass. She's heard it before when I was at St. Ambrose, and I didn't get slapped at the end of the homily, so that was good. Um, but once again, I want to reiterate, I love my mother. But I want to show you something of how hard it can be to sometimes remain patient with a family member whom you love, but also knows how to push your button. So back when I was at St. Ambrose, I had the opportunity to only live 20 minutes away uh, from West St. Paul, which, if I'm being perfectly honest, is a little bit too close to home. 
I figured I would excel here is like the perfect distance of 35 minutes. Because I can still get home easily and also say, ooh, it's too far to get home sometimes as well. But at St. Ambrose, it was Christmas Day. I had the 10 o'clock Mass. And after the 10 o'clock Mass, I went home to my mom's house and we had a great plan that we are going to do what we did as a family growing up. We were going to go to the Deutsch family first down in Newmarket. And then we're going to go to Maple Grove, the Carlson family, uh, for, for evening celebration. And because, well, this is what I do, I was going to be the driver. But I was fortunate. My mom's like, we're not taking your vehicle, we're taking mine. Not a problem, Mom. I love driving the Honda Accord. It feels like a sports car compared to my vehicle. So we pack it up. And as you know, for Christmas, if you've ever packed up to go on a little trip on Christmas Day, there's a way to pack your vehicle, especially if there's multiple stops. My mom has it all laid out. First off, we put in everything for the Carlson family. We have all the presents. The sweet potatoes, that goes to the Carlson family, right? So it's very particular. And then we load up everything for the Deutsch family. And the most important thing for the Deutsch family is not the presents. They, could care, they do like the presents. But the most important thing is my mom's salad. It's the Deutsch, Deutsch famous salad, and it's called Green Goddess Salad. And the reason it's called Green Goddess is because that's the name of the dressing. It's really not that good, but whatever. They love it, and it has to come from Pauline, right? This is mandatory. Cool. We can do that. So we pack it all up. We drive down to Newmarket, and this is where my, my mom grew up. This is the, the farm, the dairy farm, uh, which is, is still there, actually. But it's an old setup, and on that setup is the main house up above, and then down below is where the barn is, and that's where the cows are, and that's where you have to park your vehicle. But me being a good son, I'm like, Mom, I'm going to drop you off on top. And we're going to unload the car. My sister Sarah is with me as well. So we drive up the drive. We unload the car. Everything for the Deutsch family gets out. And I drive back onto the gravel road. I go down to the dairy farm and I look. And like it happens every single year, there's always a hill. There's always been a hill. But that hill is always icy. And every year I almost fall. And some years I have fallen. So I'm thinking... Not this year. I'm not going to fall. So I go up the hill, walking back to the, to, the, to the house, and I get right to the top of my mom calls. Okay. Hi, Mom. Where's the salad bowl? She asked. Um, we brought it inside. No, you didn't. Where's the salad bowl? It must be in the car, she says. Okay, Mom. I'll click, and I know what I have to do. I have to obey my mom, because that's what it says in Colossians, obey your parents, right? So I look at the hill, great, and I got to walk down it again, and once again, trying not to fall. So I get down the hill, I open up the Honda Accord, and I search through that whole car. I see the sweet potatoes, I see the presents, I see receipts from four years ago in there. There is no salad bowl at all. So... I walk up the hill, and I get up the hill once again, not falling, and I'm just, just full of joy. I didn't fall yet this year. I still have to go down one more time. But I'm like, yes, I made it. And I open up the door, and because, well, it's negative 10 degrees outside, I get in, my glasses fog up like they always do. The entryway is full of shoes. So I'm there, I'm kicking off my shoes. I take off my glasses. I start to rub and I'm squinting. because I'm blind, I can't see anything, but I can see someone staring at me. Hmm, so I'm just rubbing, I put it on, and there's my mom with a look of complete and utter disappointment. Where's the bull, Alex? Mom? It's not in the vehicle. Are you sure? Yes, Mom. I am, sh and I had that delay as well. <laughs> yes, Mom, I am sure. And I'm thinking, by the way, in the back of my mind, I can't say it. It's a bowl. Really. This whole house doesn't have a bowl. You can mix your salad. It's not the salad. It's the bowl for the salad. But you can't say that. It's very particular. So she keeps on looking. At this time, <laughs> I'm getting a little worked up. You know, I'm a little tired as well. I've had masses the night before that day, and, 
And I, I'm trying, I'm trying to love. And I just realized at that time, I have to walk away. So I get my shoes off, I get my mom a little side hug. Mom, I love you. But that bowl is not in there. Maybe we left it at home. No, I packed. Okay, mom, it's not there. So I walk away, I, just, I have to walk away. And I start talking to my cousin Joe, catching up with him. But in the background, I can hear my mom. I know that bowl is in there. I know Alex couldn't find it. No, it's, it's there. I know. And it's going on and on for two minutes. And I'm trying to tune out to the best of my ability. And then all of a sudden, my sister walks up. My sister Sarah, and she goes, Alex, where are the keys at? In my pocket. Why? Well, mom wants to walk down there and look for the salad bowl. And at that time, my cousin Joe, who I'm talking to, says, so Alex, how's your parish? And I simply said, better than my family. <laughs> Lesson learned there, by the way. <laughs> it's a great homily. And by the way, to let you know about the salad bowl, it was found 30 seconds later next to the Christmas tree. Someone thought the bowl was a present or something. Crisis averted, right? We found the lost mixing bowl. But this is what family can do to us, right? I'll be honest. If it would have been a parishioner, would have been one of you, I would have kept my calm completely probably. And yet, because it's family, it's harder sometimes. They just know how to push. They just know how to push buttons. And of course, my mom and I laugh about this now. She'll actually be at the 10 o'clock Mass, so she knows this story is coming. I talked about it yesterday morning, and she's fine with it. But I think it's just, once again, a very, very silly example of how family is actually a true gift to us. As I tell people in the confessional all the time, families help us learn how to love, how to be patient, how to be compassionate, how to be forgiving. It's an acronym that I've known I've mentioned before that Glenn Caruso uses at University of St. Thomas, and so does P.J. Fleck. Family stands for what? Forget about myself. I love you. And who did this the best way? Jesus Christ. Giving up of his own wants, of his own desires, of everything. Forget about himself because he loves us. And this is what we are called to do as well. And in our family, trying to have that peace of Christ in our life so that we may be a light that is shining in the darkness. That we may be a family that is attempting to be holy, even with our imperfections. But this is only possible when we make Christ at the center of our life and the center of our family. And we let that bond of love perfect us in Christ. I don't know if you caught our opening prayer today, but I actually want to finish my homily with it because I think it's a beautiful prayer for all families. O oh God, who are pleased to give us the shining example of the holy family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and the bonds of charity. And so, in the joy of your house, Delight one day forever in eternal rewards. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And Jesus, Mary, and Joseph pray for us. And now gathered together, we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty.
and knowing that God hears the prayers of his children, we come before our Heavenly Father with these, our prayers. That the many ministries of the church may strengthen family life throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. That governments may protect the institution of marriage made by God as the union between one man and one woman, we pray to the Lord. That the family may become evermore the sanctuary of life, where all are welcomed as a gift rather than a burden, we pray to the Lord. That families burdened by divorce, abuse, or alienation may seek and find the help of the Holy Family, we pray to the Lord. That our family members who are ill may enjoy the consolation of the Lord and the presence of their loved ones, we pray to the Lord. That our family members who have died, especially Arlene Stengel, sister of Don Giacchetti, may they be welcomed into eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Heavenly Father, you are all good and knowing of all of our needs. Please hear the prayers we make before you today and help us always to live in your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. O oh God, we earnestly ask you to bless this archdiocese with many priest brothers and sisters who will love you with their whole strength and glad.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and Saint Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, from the feast of this awe-filled mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours, and begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist in time, so that, raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Oh. you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, 
his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs of St. John the Baptist, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you, and your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind minutes to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Everywhere, no 
Let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever. Through Christ our Lord. Quick announcements. Of course, this week we have the Solemnity of Mary, Mother of God, on New Year's Day, so we'll have Mass on New Year's Eve. Uh, we'll actually have one in the morning as well, but that's for our daily Mass. We'll, for the Solemnity, we'll have one at 5 p.m. on Thursday night, and then also 9 a.m. on Friday morning. So that is the Holy Day of Obligation, although no one is obliged to come to Mass right now, but if you can make it, make it uh, to Mass or tune in as well. It's a beautiful way uh, to end the year or to start the year. Also, we'll have adoration uh, bringing in the new year, so I'll expose the Blessed Sacrament at 11 o'clock uh, p.m. on New Year's Eve, and then I'll have exposed probably to about 12, 15 a.m., and then, uh, then, of course, you can go to bed after that. But if you want to come to adoration and bring in the new year, it's, it's a beautiful thing to do. I've done it many years, and it's this uh, great way to end the year and also begin the year. So the church will be open uh, New Year's Eve as we bring in the new year. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Come to
place where the holy child is laid. Oh, come, let us see the newborn King, for he is our God and greatly to be praised. Oh, come, let us worship the King. Save it. 